Hey everybody, Marty Mazur. I'm going to do a quick illustration for you. Call it Trade with India. I'm going to write fast, so pardon my penmanship. Um, residential capital. This goes with the article you just read. Residential capital, 300 plus billion in mortgages that they service. Servicing duties for sale. Aquin is a bidder. At stake are U.S. jobs. 950 in Waterloo, Iowa. Should Aquin get the business, looks like they will outsource the labor to India or offshore. Supporting Indian employment at the expense of 950 Americans, which is indeed sad, and I mean that sincerely. But folks, we tend to stop there, but you and I aren't going to. We're going to dig a little deeper. Those are indeed U.S. dollars invested in India. U.S. exporters exist to capture those dollars. Ten billion, first half of this year alone, of goods and services sold to Indians. They, we still have a trade deficit or a current account deficit with India, but that's okay because dollars are valuable all over the world. Uh, they no doubt trade with Brazil. And Brazil buys lots of stuff from the U.S. as well and therefore would be happy to accept those U.S. dollars in exchange for whatever it is the Indians buy from them. Now, folks, this is just that flow of capital that I keep illustrating for you. But you could say, when it's all added up, that we still run a trade deficit or a current account deficit with the rest of the world, which is entirely true, which also means that we run a large capital account surplus, which accounts for all those extra dollars that come back in the form of foreign direct investment, which buys long-term assets like companies, comes back as portfolio investment, which buys stocks, as I illustrated the other day, bonds, etc. Could be treasury securities, which probably deserves its own illustration, but suffice it to say, it unleashes U.S. capital back onto the U.S. economy. Could reinvest in more assets, could, uh, could invest in other industries, these would be jobs. Who knows, perhaps uh, some of that goes to research for the latest, greatest technology of some sort. Those would be jobs as well. But, uh, but make no mistake, folks, we are talking about unleashing capital into the economy. And jobs is a big issue these days. We're talking about job creating in the U.S. activities. All these jobs down here for exporters as well. So, folks, whenever we hear a, hear a story like the Waterloo story, we must ask ourselves, should we protect one group at the expense of all these other groups, all these other individuals who benefit from free trade? I hope you agree with me that our answer has to be a resounding no. Thank you once again for watching and listening. Have a great day. Take care.